Hello and welcome to Ungimmicked Performance Reviews. My name is Gonzalo Souza and I am joined today by Sanjeev Vinod. Hello and welcome to... I'm Sanjeev. Uh, <laughs> I'm joined here by Gonzalo Souza. <laughs> wow, what an intro. Yes, that is all from me. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, today we will be reviewing Jay Sankey's Penn and Teller's performance. It's a controversial one. Uh, many people have very strong opinions on this. And we are here today to give ours. Uh, it's always important to remind everybody, uh, we are just people that have opinions and access to the internet. These are our opinions and our view on things. It's not the truth, it's not the law. We're just sharing what we think and anybody's entitled to any other opinion. More than that, if you have another opinion, please comment down below, come chat with us on social media. We would love to discuss this and get to know your perspective and all grow together. Exactly, yeah, we are two idiots with a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so our opinion is as valid or as invalid as, as anyone else. Very yeah. well said. So let's dive into Jay Sankey's fullest performance. So much, thank you. What a treat to be here. Good evening. Firstly, and off the bat, who holds a deck like like this? And and he proceeds to <laughs> hold this deck like this for about thirty seconds. I mean, I don't even think you should be holding the deck in the first place, you know? So you're introducing yourself. I want to listen to you. I want to listen to the person on stage. So I don't think the deck should be displayed at all because also that makes the image way more muddied, you know? Because now it's it's a dude with a tiny table, a couple scattered objects on the table, no message or meaning conveyed in that entire image at all. And in a time, in a moment where I really want to fall in love with you as a performer, I am subject to this utterly unrelated object that I do not care about hogging center frame. So I think that image is really working against the strength of his performance rather than for it, which is especially important in the first impression. And people often ask me, what are the influences behind the tricks? Where do I get my inspiration? And I get it from everywhere. But one thing that has inspired a lot of my illusions over the years is the real magic of fire. What a genuinely great premise. Mm -hmm. are, are, are you kidding? I'm, I'm going to, to, to cite him and, and, and just repeat some, some of the things he said. But one thing that has inspired a lot of my illusions over the years is the real magic of fire. The, the real magic. That That's made it. me feel something. That has power. Fire is inherently interesting. It's dangerous, uncontrollable, fascinating. Mm -hmm. He just, if we stop here, I am so excited for what's to come. I love fire. I love the way it looks, love the way it smells. The way it tastes, maybe not so much. You know, I, I learned that the hard way once, but fire can do so many really cool things. Here's a very simple example. And let down. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I thought we were gonna be talking about the real, the real magic of fire. But apparently fire can do so many really cool things. And here's a very simple example. Why am I getting a simple example of the real magic that is fire? It's it's just disappointing. Good point. Good point. We know that off the flame comes heat. And with heat, if I hold the pack over it, watch what happens. Just a, a little bit, a card will float right up out of the pack. Let's try to think of this as a layman, okay? So, so the stage, the fullest premise, all aside. And if we think of it as a layman, we see a guy who's holding a deck for 30 seconds like this in an extremely weird way and then he opens it and then boom a card just rises out huh i think i know how he did that he must have had the deck modified or something and again this is something a layman would tell not even from a magician's point of view because all i've seen is you holding the deck in a completely unjustified way for 30 seconds nothing else no setup open card rise and okay, maybe that must have been why he's holding it so weirdly because it was modified, especially when this is the first effect. I think it really trivializes the premise. You know, I like the point you said, G, that, you know, the real magic of fire and then, oh, let me show you a simple example of a really cool thing. And now just a playing card rises and it really seems like we're going from this great universal theme down with every single sentence one step and it just turns into a, ah, I get what he's doing. It's like a theme, 
like fire it's like in his tricks so it's gonna be like a theme uh and there goes all the chance of this being anything more meaningful you know than just cheap tricks and this this is all 40 seconds into the routine mind you and that's not really the roller coaster you want to be taking your audience down right at the beginning of the routine now that's just a very simple example. Let's up the ante here. We're gonna go from cards and cardboard to something to metal. Now, here there's something. He's saying let's up the ante and we're going from cardboard to metal. Fair enough, it, it makes sense. Metal is stronger than cardboard. But he's going to use cards, mostly use cards. Actually, the first effect is one card rising and this effect is going to be done with two cards and a bill, which is also made of paper. The metal part of this whole trick is a staple. A tiny, perhaps in insignificant and cheap <laughs> staple. If it, it just, do, what you're saying and what you're doing doesn't match and it's breaking apart whatever reality you're trying to build for me. And for this, I'm gonna be using a stapler, or as we call it in Canada, a lethal weapon. That's funny. <laughs> I just wanted to say. I think that's pretty funny. That's a that's quite a top-notch joke. Much appreciated. How many people here, show of hands, how many people have ever seen, maybe in an old movie, a set table with a tablecloth and forks and knives and spoons and everything, and somebody yanks out the tablecloth and everything stays on? How many people? Yeah, of course. I'm going to try to do that now in a very kind of down-to-earth way. But instead of a tablecloth, I'm going to use a couple of cards. Yet again, the same thing as in the beginning. He got me excited. So the, the picture that Sankey's painting is of a huge table and how amazing it could be if he just yanked that tablecloth and everybody's excited and the public claps and put their hands up and whatever. But then he doesn't. Actually, it's it doesn't even matter. And why are you bringing it down to earth? We are dealing with a real magic of fire. So I thought. Even if you just did this as a trick, just as a card trick, I think it's brilliant. I think it's quite an impressive card trick. But the issue here is he's set up this expectation of, you know, that the tablecloth pulling, which to me, just from the audience's reaction, you can hear how that is something that we would like to see. And then he sets that expectation and then uses two tiny cards and the staple in, in a thousand seat theater, you know, and it's turning a really good card trick into a disappointment before it even begins, simply by virtue of the framing around it. I think that's a real shame. The cards are gonna use are gonna be the seven of hearts. Okay. And I'm gonna use the queen of clubs. It's important to mention, uh, and through, uh, we're in the middle of this video more or less, that we, we are being picky and we are being, but it, that's, that's the whole point of this, is to, to really deconstruct this performance and talk about all the little details and the little things. And here's a detail that was overlooked so it's a trick that's going to up the ante it's about metal supposedly but then attention is called to the identity of the cards i thought that didn't matter i, I thought we upped the ante why do i care if it's the queen of clubs or the seven of diamonds or the ace of spades i don't think it matters i'm gonna do this very slowly because i know magicians have a way of moving very quickly and it's suspicious i want you to see the bill is truly between the two okay you see here is where um I think it's the biggest discrepancy between uh, Sankey's idea of constructing this show and our vision analyzing it right now. Even though he tried to set up this premise of the real magic of fire, all his lines are about doing little tricks. Uh, magicians always move so fast. No, I don't. Look at how good I am. I move slow and you dumbwits still can't catch me. <laughs> That's what he's saying. <laughs> it's not explicit. He didn't call the audience dumbwits on stage, but that's what he made me feel like. As tricks, and as you pointed out just before Sanjeev, these tricks, in terms of magic component, amazing. It's an amazing card trick with a bill, but it misses the point in the grand context of a show, in my opinion. Is that a real staple? That is a real staple. Okay, now watch. A little heat. This is, again, the magic of fire. A little heat, and I'm hoping I'll be able to take the bill and... I don't know, dude. I think there's just something about this that comes across as extremely disingenuous to me. And I think that's also evident. I think he gets it, too. I think he realized it in his script because notice as he 
as he, as he waves that beal, he has to say, oh, and just a little heat. Remember, this is the real magic of fire. If you have to remind your audience what your entire routine is about halfway into the routine, you've probably not really made the routine about said theme. I think you've distracted us enough if you really need to remind us about it. And the, and the source for this lack of authenticity, I think, is that it really feels like it's all about him. You know, gee, I know you mentioned, but especially here, I think that discrepancy between fire and him is really highlighted. He talks about himself. He brings Jonathan. He's like, please stand here. Uh, this, uh, I'm going to do it really slow. I'm going to do it with the staple. It's going to make it harder for me. Oh, by the way, fire. And the way he set up this premise, I think really gave me expectations of something that was about fire. And this feels like something that's about him with the theme of fire just tacked on as a by the way, which really takes the meaning away from it, I think. Let's take it a step further. I'm going to show you a card trick. It's, it's not a step forward. I'm going to show you a card trick is not a step forward. If, if anything, we're taking a step back. 30 or 45 seconds ago, you up the ante to metal. And now you're stepping forward to cards? No, it, it's a circle. Sanjeev, I know you were talking about him realizing the flaws in his script. I'm going to be very honest. I don't think this was written down anywhere. It, if it was, it, everything was overlooked. Because these these are, are this is evident here. It's it's they're just lines that mean nothing. They're discontextualized, just to fill in silence. And it's a shame because the magic is so good. I, at least I know from friends that fool us requires scripts, right? And so it requires you to have a script going in. So I wouldn't say that it's the lack of a script itself, but I think it's more a manifestation of very lazy scripting, where. It really seems like the performer himself has an attitude that the magic is important and the words are, you know, patter, meaningless, just kind of there. And that's attitudes really coming across to us as the audience in how much thought is put into the trick versus how much thought is put into the script. And I think, I think it's like shooting yourself in the foot because I think the magic is phenomenal. I think Sankey's creations are phenomenal. I think that premise of fire was incredible. And then all of his words are moving himself backwards and robbing himself of the potential of all of his magic. But it's not a card trick. It looks like a card trick, but it's actually a public service announcement. Wait, <laughs> so it's not a card trick. <laughs> so this is how it goes. We have, we have card tricks, we have metal, but really it was up to the ante and then step forward. So it's metal and then card tricks and then we have public service announcements. I think this is a really interesting hierarchy we've painted for how magicians see the world. <laughs> it is, it, the announcement is very simple. It's simply this, do not, when you're gonna work out, always make sure you warm up before you work out. Now, do me a favor, separate the two cards. Pull them apart. Pull them apart, this proves once again that they are. I need to work out more. <laughs> okay. There we go, there. And I'm gonna actually remove this staple as well because I'm gonna have the two cards for your entertainment pleasure. They're gonna to exercise together, watch. So what's this about? We've lost the plot. We've completely lost the plot. Yeah, I'm a little confused. Is this for my entertainment pleasure? Is this about how good you are and how slow you are compared to magicians? Is this still the PSA? Is any of this about <laughs> fire though? <laughs> Jeez, dude. It's all over the place. There's, oh, a, at this point, you really don't have an end to pull the string from. Now my job, as a magician, the way I see it, Jonathan, is to try to restore things, to put the pieces back together. So look, I'm gonna take a bunch of the pieces and I'm gonna just heat them up, a little bit there. And in fact, I'm also gonna use some static electricity. Luckily, I've got enough hair on my arms like a baby gorilla. Okay, I have some issues with the actual <laughs> structure here. Because it was on him. He, he did say he was going to do a PSA. And so I will approach this as if it is a PSA. To me, a PSA works only if it conveys the harms, the downsides, the consequences of not complying with said PSA, right? He touches on the harms that, okay, when you stretch, you tear, you tear muscles. You, when you don't stretch, you tear muscles, you tear ligaments. And then goes on to fix it with magic and static electricity. Say what you will. Yeah, I, I love his baby gorilla joke, and I think he's a really <laughs> funny Canadian. But 
that's a really bad PSA. With every successive line, to me, this just seems like a really sad excuse for a presentation. Even touching on those lines, one of them is my job as a magician, as I see it, is to restore things. Then why was the first thing you did to make a card rise? That didn't restore anything. Then were you doing your job? Then why did you pull a dollar bill from two cards that were stapled? It's, th that's not your job then. And I don't care in this point because I'm supposed to care about fire. I thought that was the real magic. So why the f do we need static electricity to bring the cards together after they were touched to fire? This is a horrible PSA. <laughs> Both cards are now totally back together and completely examinable for you. Examinable is magician talk. No one is assuming that it's not examinable. And, and again, by no one, I'm, I'm talking from the perspective of the audience, you know, because, because the hundreds of people there and then the millions of people watching the video, I deem as, you know, at least worth attention and thought in comparison to the two people, Penn and Teller, magician-wise, right? And I think the issue by saying something is examinable is it's making us ask a question that was never in our mind in the first place. I was never wondering if they were gimmicked or if they were not examinable, but just by mentioning that, now you are bringing that into my mental frame. You are making it salient. And that, just like so many other, uh, of the rest of the lines in this presentation, takes it from being a wonderful effect into a trick done by a magician. Instead of saying examinable, just hand it to the guy. Just, just literally hand it to them. And I, and I think it implies it and it shows that it's real instead of having to say the word examinable. It's always better to show than to say. That was five thank yous. He said thank you five times. Yes, I have nothing further to say on that. Meanwhile, that transition to the next piece, uh, to repeat it for you all, it was the last trick I'm going to do is this is not even an attempt at a routine. If your presentation and your segue is the last trick I'm going to do, that just again further really hammers in the point that not enough thought has been put into these parts of magic. And, and to me, with a performer as big as Sankey on stage, as big as Penn and Teller, to me, that is really saying these parts of magic are not important. Scripting, presentation, theatricality, things making sense. None of this is what an audience wants to see. None of this is what they're looking for or even will notice. Instead, focus only on the magic and nothing on any of these. And so you end up with transitions like the last trick I'm going to do is a bit of a psychic connection between you and I. Well, I felt it. Okay, good. I know, it didn't last very long. Sorry about that part. I know, I know. But... What? What's this interaction? What is it? I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. It's more than what you say. Is The things that you say mean something. So there, there is a subtext to this. And I think it's atrocious. I, I love what you said. I think something we discuss a lot in our podcast is that jokes do have subtext. It's not just about getting a laugh. It's about getting a laugh and what it implies. And the implications of this all draw me a picture of a, of a really insecure person masquerading as a magician, you know? And I don't think that's who Sankey is. And that's the real tragedy at the heart of this to me, is that he is portraying himself as someone worse than he is solely by virtue of the subtext of a joke. And I think at that point, that half second laugh wouldn't even be worth it anymore. Very important, a lot of magicians do this. I want you to notice two things. Number one is the cards are all different. I want you to see that they're all different, my cards. It's a lot easier if they're the same card. A lot less practice, <laughs> believe me, it really is. Okay, so look, I'm gonna spread out the cards. Okay. I want you to touch anyone you want. Okay, again, similar to the problem we raised with the word examinable, I think there's some pointless magician talk going on here with all the cards are different. I don't think that needs to be said. I think the default assumption is that the cards are different. So you are raising a question that we were never asking once more. And I think a way more subtle and equally convincing way to do that 
is just show the cards. Just flash the cards. We see that they're different. We don't need you to repeat exactly what we see. That is treating us at a very, very low level of intelligence. And no audience should be treated that way. And another little thing, this might be the cause of a, it might be because of a weird camera cut, but he says, I'm going to tell you two things. Then he tells us one. Might be because of a weird camera cut, though. So that's, I think, one of the things we can discount compared to all the rest of the stuff we've talked about in this video. Going back to the point of all the cards being different, we are saying it's better to show than it is to say. But in this case, the only reason it's there, it's not even to further the plot, is to do a joke about the fact that it's easier if all the cards are the same because it involves less practice. It's the only reason I see for that line there. Because all the cards being different, that's assumed, and quite irrelevant for, for the trick in the end, because you end up seeing cards all over. So a little bit more thought should have gone into this. Just because you can make a joke doesn't mean you should. Doesn't mean it fits. It doesn't mean you can just do it, because things mean... Th things mean other things. They don't exist in a vacuum. Okay, now I'm not even gonna remove the card from the pack. I'm gonna leave it sticking out of the middle of the pack, and we're not gonna take it out, but I'm gonna ask you to take a quick peek. Okay. A quick peek at the card, remember See keep it, it mine. Okay, got it. Will you remember it? Yes. I mean, I just have a lot of questions because he seemed to make a really, really, really big deal about things that I was never told why they were important. And I, I can, I, as an audience member, we can only assume from what we were told, right? And he, and he made a really big deal about the card will stay right in the middle and we're not going to take it out. And only a quick peek and not a clear look like, you know, normal human beings. And I think that unlike so many of the other things in, in Sankey's script where he's explained things that did not need to be explained, this, I think, is a clear instance of something that's out of the ordinary. You know, it's different from the status quo. And I think those are the scenarios where things need to be explained. Got it. Will you remember it? Yes. The suit, the yes. number, everything. Yes, all okay. of it. Okay, all, all of it. All I remember everything about that car. Now watch, let's try this. I'm going to take the sparkler. He's thinking of a car. Yes. They were all different. Here we go, there we go. Okay, again, there was an instance here of Jonathan, you know, trying his best to make a joke, and he did, and I think Sankey needs to acknowledge Jonathan, because if you have brought someone up on stage, they are exposed, and they are your spectator, and they are a guest. And you treat guests with respect, and that means acknowledging the things they say, rather than steamrolling through your script. And just regarding objects, I think in this case, the sparkler feels like a prop. And I mean prop in the worst sense of the word, by the way, because why a sparkler? You know, talk, talk about the oddity of an object. Oddity is great because it makes an audience intrigued. Oh, why is it a sparkler? But if something is odd purely for the sake of being odd, that doesn't make any sense. And beyond that, Sankey didn't really acknowledge the oddity of the sparkler either. He just came out and he was like, yeah, so this is going to use the sparkler. We saw that earlier with the dollar bill between the cards. Why is there a dollar bill between the cards? And unfortunately, I feel like Sankey's answer to that question is because that's what you need for the trick. And I think that's really the lowest plane that magic can exist on. And I think we can do a lot better. I, I, I want to immortalize those words, you know, put them on a plague, put them on a wall. Uh, no, I, I, think you, I think you said that beautifully. Um, Touching on another thing that he says, uh, he's reinforcing, he, he mentions it again, all the cards are different. It's already been established. A joke was made about that when mm -hmm. I, did, I didn't even see the need to establish it in the first place, and it's being established twice. It's, it's a, lack, a lack of attention to, to detail. Again, just a quick note here, compare the number of times the cards being different is established versus the number of times fire is referred to in an act about fire. <laughs> yeah, somehow we've forgotten about the fire. It's almost as if no attention was paid to it whatsoever for the past three minutes. I know you want to sing happy birthday, right? You immediately want to sing it. But let's see, I'm going to try to find this card. Okay, again, that happy birthday joke gets a laugh. But I really don't think this is the right moment for a joke. You have this great dramatic build from moment to moment and right in the middle it's interrupted by a completely irrelevant joke. But on the other side, he is finally acknowledging the sparkler, you know, like three quarters into the routine and he talks about it, which is a step towards 
the baseline, you know, what he should have done all along, but it is a step towards it. So uh, I think that is worth acknowledging. We're doing it. We're, yes, yes, look. It's going through the middle of the deck, and I'm gonna try to see if I can pull his one, it's burning, it's burning my fingers, it's right like this, look. look. Wait, let's, let's bring it back. Uh, when we began this trick, and I say trick because that's what he called it, the last trick. When we began this trick, it was a psychic connection between Sankey and Jonathan, right? So why is a sparkler going through the deck to find the card? <laughs> it has its own sentence too. It's going through the middle of the deck. It 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 does. It, it, I'm, I'm sorry. Somebody please please tell Pete McCabe to email to 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 email either a PDF <laughs> or to send the physical books of Scripting Magic Volume. There are two volumes now. Volume one and two. Add him to your library, Jay Sankey. And I'm saying this with a lot of love in my heart because you are a great magician, a great creator that overlooks what to me are the basics. And it's a shame. It's, it's a true shame. If, if nothing else is taken from this episode, take this. When you say something, when you do something, it means something. It has... It, it will have repercussions for the rest of your effect. You can't just say something and expect people to not care about it five seconds later and people to care about the thing that you said three minutes ago that you haven't mentioned all throughout. Things need to make sense. Burnt. Burnt right through every card except for one card, one card. Again, I think we see a little discrepancy between image and narrative here where the image is... Let me see if I can get it on camera. It's the sparkler, there's a card on it, and that is almost outside the frame. Even here, it's outside the frame. It's next to his hip, right? And meanwhile, the deck that got burnt is up here in your face, covering his own face, therefore clearly center stage. And it's talked about for a sentence and a half, where it's like, the deck is cleanly burnt through. And meanwhile, the card on the sparkler, which were both supposed to be the main characters in this piece, are sitting in the background, lower near his hip, almost obscured by his body. While the deck that got burnt, you see? It's through the middle of the, you see? Yeah, I just really don't think that image aligns at all with what he is trying to convey to us as the core of this effect. What was the card? The card was the Jack of Spades. You're sure? I'm pretty sure. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I found the Jack of Spades. Wow. Okay, thank you so much. Jay Sankey, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It is anger time. Few key issues, okay? First of all, the card he's holding there on the sparkler. I'm terrified of sparklers because I think they burn or whatever. G has, has made it clear to me that that is not true. But still, it just feels wrong to see the card being held right around that flame right there. Okay, that just in my gut feels wrong. And second, since we've talked so much about script, we might as well talk about the ending. And the last line of Sankey's script was, And I think I've found the Jack of Spades. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why did you end with what you found? And actually not go back to fire at all. But I think that was on me. I think that was actually my fault because it's my bad that I, I thought this piece was about fire. You know, I'm sorry. I should have I should have known it was about you. And and that was on me. So maybe we can't really blame Sankey for that. Um and, and I guess it's 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 really tragic that I only discovered my mistake in the last line of the script because if I had known it was about Sankey all along, I never would have really invested in that premise or the concept of fire or the candle sitting on the table for the entire routine. Yes, uh, again, something that we've repeated throughout this breakdown. What a creator, what brilliant tricks, what brilliant magic, I would go so far as to say. And simply the framing, the scripting, and the utter disregard for 80% of what makes magic has taken those effects and turned them into just trivial tricks that become forgettable moments after the show. And I think, I think that's indicative of, of a larger problem here of Sankey 
making this entire performance about trying to fool Penn and Teller, when even Penn and Teller on their own interviews have confessed that's not what this show is about. The show is not about fooling Penn and Teller. The show is about showcasing what the best of magic is. And this is not the best of magic. This was not. I have very little to add there. Uh, I, I'm going to add um, a couple of caveats, because in, in, in fairness, um, the the Penn and Teller show in the in its first couple seasons when Jay Sankey was there and the show that we know today, they're very different and they have different goals. Back then, it was much more geared towards actually fooling Penn and Teller. So I, I will have to concede that and give it to Sankey. But at the same time, we can't run away from the fact that it, when you're performing magic, you are performing magic. And this is on national TV for everybody to see. So even though you might be your main goal is to fool Penn and Teller. As an artist, as a creator, don't you hold certain principles within yourself? Don't you have values on, on how you want to present your craft and how you want to be seen by everybody? I, I think it. I think this lack just attention. This attack. This uh, lack attention to detail. Um, it lacked care. It lacked interest on 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 Sankey's part. And I will say I will say it for the second time, Sanjeev. You've said it once. So it's the third time that we're saying it collectively. Sankey has great, great magic, and this set is a proof of that. That his magic is very strong. But he could not get me to care about it. In in, in turn, he got me. He he was able to make me turn away from his performance and his magic. And and I will say this. This was, you know, a, a con with the con, according to Sankey, where he's put out a video before about how all the methods were actually secretly not the methods, and he actually fooled Penn and Teller. Gonzalo and I don't have anything to say to that. No. I think Penn has said everything he wants to yeah. in his podcast, but I will say that no matter how much thought you put into method, that is not an excuse to not put thought into other parts of your craft. Exactly. And as also, thank you for touching on that, because it's always good to remind everybody that's watching us. We are not here to discuss methods. We, we don't care. We, we find them interesting, and we, between ourselves, we will discuss them and we will geek out about them. But that's not the point of these videos. Uh, the method is secondary. So all that drama that happened is not for us to talk about, because we're not involved, and again, we're idiots with microphones. But in regards to the presentation and to, to, to analyzing this as a magic routine, it was poor. And that's, that's, that's my opinion. I would love that somebody would disagree and would tell me why they disagree instead of just screaming in caps lock at me. So please tell me why you disagree or why you agree, because both are important and leave them below. If you want to continue the discussion, you can talk to us on social media. Uh, come chat with us on Instagram, at ungimmick. If you love our work, patreon.com slash ungimmick is where you should go. And I guess come listen to the podcast as well, because all those episodes are up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and right here on YouTube, so you have no excuse to not listen to them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is us saying goodbye. My name is Gonzalo Souza. I've been joined by Sanji Vinod. Thank you for listening and watching on Gimmick. <laughs>